Hello AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our example 7, getting very close to the end of our topic 9.6, dealing with vectors and motion. This time we're going to look at an application that deals with firefighters to the rescue, some of our first responders. Let's take a look here. We've got water from a fire hose that is being discharged at a maximum rate of 80 feet per second from a height four feet from the ground. Firefighters are able to get 25 feet from a burning building and they shoot the water from their hoses at an angle of 45 degrees, excuse me, to the ground. So we're gonna look at two different questions here. First of all, A, what is the maximum height that the water can reach? And then part B, if the building completely burns down, that's kind of sad, and the firemen are still shooting water on the wreckage, how far into the wreckage can the water reach? So as with any vector value motion problem that deals with gravity, we have to set up our vector function that has the various components x and y assembled correctly. And obviously, gravity is going to play a role into this. We have the x component not affected and then the y component that will be affected. So if you recall, the standard setup is your rate at which, in this case, the water is being shot times the time. So that would be feet per second times second. So that would give us feet. That's going to tell us um, uh, how far this water will have uh, emanated from the hose. And then we have an angle that we have to contend with that's cosine of 45 degrees. And that would comprise our I vector or X component. Now for the Y, we have a little bit more to work with. We have to put our negative 16 T squared. We are in feet here. And now we move to our VOT, which would look very similar to our X component vector, except having the sine of 45 degrees. And then we're thinking that these firemen will probably be handling this hose, you know, under their shoulder, under their arm, four feet, let's say, from the ground. And that would give us our complete Y of T. So now we just look at part A. What is the maximum height that the water can reach? So you're talking about the water um, being uh, shot um, in a sort of hyper or a parabolic path and the height that it's going to reach is always going to be determined by this y of t and so we're going to go ahead and find uh, his derivative we're going to take the derivative of the y component and so the y of t component all that we're really concerned with has a derivative of negative 32 t plus 80 sine of 45 degrees Now we know that we can set this derivative equal to zero to find the critical values for it, as we always did with functions from say a b calculus. And if this is set equal to zero, hopefully you can see that you would subtract the 80 sine 45 degrees over, divide by the negative 32, and you will have a pair of negatives that will cancel away. And so you're essentially dealing with 80 times the sine of 45 degrees, all divided by 32. And we can go to our calculator to see what that is going to be equivalent to. So kind of move my camera out of the way, get me a fraction here, and I'll type 80 times the sine of 45. Notice that I am in radian mode. So I need to add that degree symbol and divide that by 32. I think if I get a decimal in there, I'm going to get some decimal output. Sometimes not, and it happens. It's okay. Just hit control, enter. A lot of times we're, we're kind of dictated by what happens with this sine of 45 degrees, uh, whether we're going to go with an exact value. But we've got the value that we want as a decimal now. 1.767 will round it. And that is the time at which we reach our highest point. Much like the previous problem, uh, we had computed the time that the baseball would reach its highest point. Now, if we want to know what is that height going to be, then we just merely need to enter the 1.767 
into our our y function and calculate that. So tell you what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going to go back to the calculator and I am going to go ahead and define that y of t because I got a feeling we're going to use it uh, perhaps even a second time here. So negative 16 t squared plus 80 times t times the sine of 45 degrees plus 4. And now if I just take the y, evaluate it at my 1.7677, do my little control enter so I can get a decimal answer, move my camera out of the way, and I will get a result of 54 feet. And that's how high the water is going to shoot. Actually, came out to be a nice integer answer. Now for part B. The question reads, if the building were to completely burn down, but the firemen still have to make sure that they take care of any, you know, everlasting embers that are aglow, so they're going to still be shooting the water into the wreckage. They want to know how far the, uh, the firemen can shoot into the wreckage. And you have to remember that firemen can still only get 25 feet from the building. That includes the building after it's been burned down. So you're essentially going to be, first of all, focusing on what is the overall horizontal distance in, in which we can um, still uh, reach with this hose. And in order to do that, you, you first of all have to think about the vertical component. In other words, y of t is going to be set equal to something very important, first of all. And that is going to be set equal to zero. Because if you think about it, draw my pretty horrible picture here. Here's the fireman. Here's the hose. The hose is going to shoot in a parabolic fashion. Whenever that water reaches ground level, which is would be the wreckage on the wreckage, then we know that the y value is going to be zero. However, we do not know what this x value is. And that's what the whole problem is about. We want to find what that is. So we're going to set y of t equal to 0. And as I said before, it's probably a good idea that we had our y defined, because we can just move right into our algebra solve, take our y of t equation, set it equal to 0, comma t. It's probably going to give us some ugliness, so we'll hit Control enter to get some prettiness. And we find out that there are two answers but only one of them really makes sense, the 3.6048. Now, for those of you who might be using a different kind of calculator, you might be thinking about graphing this. Uh, you would graph y of x in this case, and we could see here that I know that this is not a really perfect depiction because of my scale could probably be altered, but right here is going to be that intersection point, which you can tell is three and some change, which is going to corroborate the 3.604 that you found here. So that is our time at which our water is going to reach that end. Now we evaluate the x component of our vector value function. Now, I don't have this one defined but I only have to type it in one time, so I might as well just type it in as I evaluate it at 3.604. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. We've got, uh, what was that guy? 80 multiplied by 3.604. And if you want to get a little bit more accuracy, go ahead and put those extra two places there. And then you'll multiply by the cosine of 45 degrees. This is all going to give us an exact answer, my control enter will convert it, and I got 203.923, which is correct, but I don't think that that necessarily answers the question. 203.923. Because we have to remember that the fireman has to stay 25 feet, picture not drawn to scale, from the wreckage. So what that means is, we have to scoot this back, 
by 25 feet to really calculate how deep into the wreckage that we get. And it's kind of a tricky question from that regard. So 203923 minus 25 would be 178.923 feet. If we say round to the nearest foot, you'd say probably 179 feet. Hopefully it makes sense to you why you would subtract that 25. That's our example seven. We only have one more left to take care of. See you at the next video.